Ron, thanks for joining me today. Thank you very much, Mr. West. Ron, tell me a little bit about what Current Water Technologies does. Current Water Technologies has two proprietary disruptive technologies. Mm -hmm. One is it using a, a legacy technology called electrostatic deionization that came up, by the way, over 50 years ago by the U.S. Department of Defense. Mm -hmm. So it's been around for a long, long time. We have two patented uh, technologies, one for cleaning water and the other one for cleaning ammonium called ML. So hmm. ESD is the, uh, is the technology which is called electrostatic deionization. Okay, so essentially you're producing electrostatically deionized water from what kind of sources? Uh, 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 Groundwater, uh, municipal water, seawater uh, sea water as well too, oh. uh, taking out uh, uh, salt for boilers, for, for piping, uh, all sorts of different applications okay. that it can be used for. So where are you producing this water in the world now? We have a pilot project right now in Saudi Arabia, in Jeddah, mm -hmm. uh, with a uh, very significant uh, material investor in our company as well, too. Okay. Uh, they took a million dollar placement in the company a number of years ago at 10 cents a share. Uh, that particular, uh, we have a contract right now for $1.8 million delivery, which goes in the second quarter to Jeddah. Mm. For, for that enterprise. Mm. And uh, we believe that'll be one of very, many significant orders for current water technologies. Okay, so do you license the technology or do you actually re recognize a royalty off the volume of water cleaned or produced? No, they are partners of ours effectively in the Middle East. They have all the, uh, they have, uh, the marketing and the license rights uh, for the product and they do our sales for us. So they're a strategic alliance and partner for us mm -hmm. which will increase our sales. Okay, so is this a bottled water product at the end of the day? No. Uh, it's used for more municipal or industrial applications. I see. So if you take uh, industrial right now in Jetta, the water that they use has high levels of salt concentrate that's still in the water. So they would have premature failure right now because of using their water has high levels of salt in it. So a typical boiler, for example, what they use in their industrial city like Jetta would last, I would say, a uh, typical lifespan should be somewhere between 20 to 25 years. Mm -hmm. Because of the salt, they can't pull it out of the water. Uh, they have premature failure of these boilers in their pipes and they break down within three and a half to five years. I see. So that materially shift changes their production and, and shuts them down. So right. they need the, uh, the Okay, salt. so in the news lately, we've been listening to the idea that Cape Town, South Africa is facing day zero in April of this year where they're actually going to run out of a municipal water supply. Correct. Is this technology applicable to that kind of a situation? In a municipal, uh, in municipal applications, absolutely yes. Yes. Most, our largest competitor to the industry you would see is reverse osmosis or filtration membrane type of technologies. And that's what they would use in most desalination plants or in Cape Town or for city of Toronto or city of Vancouver or city of Calgary. We augment those processes and what we can do is our water filtration uh, standpoint is as effective and more is is more effective and complements okay those sort of water uh, those water situations mm -hmm. or, or filtration units. Okay. So we don't compete necessarily against the membrane technologies. We can augment and support it and help it and provide fresh drinking water. Hmm. Um, an example would be uh, take Walkerton, which okay. was a, sure. which is a big uh, story a number of years back. Uh, like our electrostatic deionization removes 99.9997% of E. coli through ESD technology. 99.9997. Well, that's pretty close to five nines. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, that's, a, that's a fact. <laughs> it's a fact. Great. Okay. So, what exactly? How does the revenue model work? Where do you where do you get a profit? What's what's the revenue picture look like going forward in 2018? So we just recently acquired a company called Pumptronics out of Oakville. It, it, revenues for 2017 for the company would roughly range in around about the $5.2 million range. Uh, we're profitable. We make a little bit of money right now, which is about $400,000. Uh, we're looking at 2018 sales at around $13 million, which would probably take our profits up to around $2 million. So we got a backlog of orders from the legacy company that we just acquired, Pumptronics, out of Oakville. Uh, but we also have significant orders that we believe that are coming on stream, particularly the ones out of Saudi Arabia that mm -hmm. we believe are pretty material. 
We have uh, also a material contract out in Calgary in the oil and gas, uh, with an oil and gas uh, player as well too, who is very significant and deals with major, major clients like Shell, BP, and, as, and et cetera. And that happens to have a royalty income stream revenue on that particular model, so you know that. But it's not actually used for water, it's actually being used in the petrochemical business. We're hmm. using ESD technology for removal of an organic sulfur. There's lots of applications that you can use this ESD technology for. Oh, I see. So you can use it for removal of ammonium, okay? okay. You can use it for cleaning of water. And it just so happens we use it in the petrochemical business for removal of an organic solvent. Mm. Uh, okay, so what are the big, uh, what's the revenue picture look like for 2018, would you say? I would say we're, uh, for 2018, we'll be in around the $13 million mark. Okay. And we're looking for probably about a $2 million profit for the company. Which That's is, not bad. It's not a bad start for the company. Sure. Uh, we're just ramping up. We just closed a financing for the company right now. So the company just uh, completed about a $2.5 million capital raise uh, huh. for the company. Okay. So we're just getting up and rock, uh, starting to rock them. How many shares out? Right now, about 137 million shares. After the financing is completed, we'll be closer to about 150 million. Okay, great. Then, so what would be the big milestones in 2018 that investors can look out for that are demonstrative of increasing shareholder value? The first one I would watch for is uh, the transaction in Jetta. So this is a material order that's going out the door. As I said, it's a 1.8 million dollar unit that's being delivered uh, to Jetta in Saudi Arabia. I think that will go on the second quarter. And I think that's going to probably really shift change uh, the sales uh, for this company. Mm. And so as I said, it's a it's a you know just close to a two million dollar unit, but I think it's going to be a showcase in the Middle East, okay, for cleaning water. And I think our partners will uh, really be adding value by growing those sales initiatives for the 2018-2019 year, and we would expect some very positive. Uh, outlook for those sales revenue side. Hmm. All right, Ron, that's a great introduction. We're going to leave it there for now. We'll come back to you in a quarter's time and see how you're doing. Thanks for your time today. Very grateful for your time as well, too. Thank you, James.